Hello, this is Hakadabin, and today we are going to be continuing the Bellaverse canon. I mean, we were yesterday too, it's just that it took a little bit longer for there to be any mention of it, and honestly, I still don't think there was any mention of Bellaverse, actually. I don't know why that file was actually in the list of Bellaverse stories, but we read the entire story from beginning to the point where it was supposed to be a part of the Valver Saga. Anyway, today we are reading Digital Children. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Elder Gorana kneels on the docks with her head held high and her arms spread apart. She seeks the guidance of Grandmother Desert to s and to save the wrath of Grandfather Storm. Before her lies a large brass dish filled with gold, gemstones, and ceremonial food offerings to be thrown into the great desert as offerings. Wind picks up as of her eroding the coming of Grandfather Storm, whose buffeting clouds of ash and snow now fill the distant horizon. She hopes that her meek offerings will be enough to calm Grandfather Storm and, and spare her tribe from annihilation. Bowing her head and bringing her hands together, the other begins to, to pray. Oh, Grandmother Desert, may your wound ensue the ash of your skin. Oh, great Grandmother Desert, may your ash give our ships lift. Oh, may your winds push us safely to our destinations. Oh, Grandmother Desert, may you keep Grandfather Storm silent and peaceful, so our boats and villages may yet see another dawn. Oh, Grandmother Desert, may your hearts be bountiful along the rim. May we take only what is needed for ourselves. <clears throat> Grana get rest a handful of gold, golden gemstones and lightly toss them off the edge of the dock. Watch them strike the ash desert with barely a sound and disappearing with little puffs of gray ash. She raises her eyes to the sky while keeping her hands on the dock with her elbows stretched outwards. Oh, Grandmother Desert, safeguard our explorers. Give them passage through your skirts of dune and sand to the great forest beyond. Oh, Grandmother Desert, take our tribute within the folds of your ash skin. May you rest well during the dawn and sleep peacefully during the dusk. Keep us, oh, Grandmother Grey. Oh, Grandmother Ash. O oh, Grandmother of Dust and Sand, O oh, Grandmother of Life and Bastion. <sighs> she bows her head to kiss the ash covered her dock, though she is not finished yet. Two handfuls of rice and meat are and spices. Is our thrown into the desert sands, lost in the ash as a final offering. Hateful Grandfather Storm, Great Thunderer, fire in the ash, may your sleep be restful and silent, may your rage taper and your temper dim, grant us passage to the rim. Vengeful Grandfather Storm, mighty in anger, take these offerings and sleep. Wrathful, wrathful Grandfather Storm, with all respect, we you leave these offering, eternal grandfather storm. May these humble offerings satiate your rage. A final vow, another kiss, is to the ash, and Garana's ritual is done. For a moment, the other allows herself to look into the swirling maelstrom that rides the wind towards her village. As she does, a strange feeling of apprehension forms at the base of her spine. Leaning back to the rest, as on her feet, Grona reflects on the coming storm, studying the billowing clouds raked with its constant arcs of lightning. A storm this large has not been seen for many decades in her village, not since the elder was a young girl. She has her wish that the storm will not erase him from the face of the desert. <sighs> with a forlorn orange sigh, she bids herself to stand. As she does so, the other takes a few minutes to look one last time at the billowing ash clouds. Their endless rolls lit by webs of white and blue lightning on their jagged paths to strike the desert, looking like the fingers of Grandfather Storm seeking to touch the land himself. Hmm. 
About to turn away, turn away, Garana stops. Something catches her eyes. A figure floating above the sands amidst the webs of electric fury. She blinks only for a moment, and it is gone. Surely Garana only saw a mirage, and not a man of wreathed in blue light. Elder Garana chuckles at herself nervously. The star must have thrown it at her as a last trick to fool her aging mind. She turns head toward her sheltered hut and stops dead, her eyes freezing and her heart nearly stopping as well. There stands the figure of a man with flesh of silver, suspended above the ground by means the elder cannot fathom. The man, if he can be called that, is wreathed in a faint globe of blue energy. Garana understands what has come to her poor village. She begins to weep involuntarily while uncertainty at the base of her spine grows to a full shiver of morbid anticipation. The figure opens its mouth and alien sounds comes from within him. Sounds like sand being run through a metal sleeve. The outer box covers her ears in shock and suffers back onto the pier, with fear taking her heart in its icy grip. The man growls, as if insulted, and extends his hand. It is at this moment that Elder Isa Gorana recognizes the man. No one recognizes the myth that he represents. Stormcaller. She whispers in the few seconds that remain ends of her life. Blue fire spirals around his fingers, throwing off the same aura as Grandfather Storm in the background. The air around Gorana hisses and crackles as lightning bursts forth from his fingers and into the old woman's body. In an instant, her body is burned away, her flesh charred off, and her bones turned in black. A thunderous roar of air fills a void left in Gorana's place and blasts the remains of heart. The offering dish is sent skittering across the desert by the blast surface before sinking beneath the gray sand. The storm rumbles across the docks and into the streets. A falling wind strong enough to rip foundations of clay and wood from the ground. Blowing ash fire enough to clean corpses of flesh through the air within this torrent. White buildings are being ripped asunder. The figure turns around and walks back into the desert as a herald of Grandfather Storm's wrath. Forces beyond the storm's edge that rips a small village from the desert's edge breaks against a small impenetrable field of energy that moves within the sandstorm. It appears from the outside as an avoid a shell of blue light crackling in with violent electrical arcs and now like any particle daring to touch its surface. Inside the shield, a man is suspended above the thin ash sand, traveling at a constant rate, 40 meters per second, by his own calculations, toward the epicenter of the storm. Specialist the town and wipes the remains of the elder savage from his silver form fitting uniform, only pausing a nanosecond to contemplate in how the particulates made it through his energy shield. He dictates a mental memo to reprimand Engineer Grand for not calculating the nanites of his suit correctly. The town cannot have lesser beings touching his superior form of their own will, dead or alive. Amidst his own calculative of thoughts, a CN an unrose message barges its way through, pushing aside less than critical information to gain Zatan's attention. The process is labeled with an encryption several steps above Zatan's own. With a nanosecond of, of contempt, he answers the call. Archivist Moose speak. Were you required to insert iterate the lesser form? Are savages required to be spared the data to live? Answer my query, specialist. He knows a rubber man will require him to port dogs, and he does not have the deviant capacity to refuse such punishment. Yet, sir, uh, attend correct speed calculations to accelerate his velocity so he will reach home port within an hour. A jet of ash pushed by the sudden force of acceleration blasts the air behind his avoid energy shield and is violently dispersed by the storm's winds. I was not required. She 
Specialist is 10. Return to your home port immediately. You are to undergo 500 cycles of basic algorithms and 500 cycles of complex computation recitations for programming the dev deviations. So 10 runs the calculations through his processes. It will take him 3.6 times 10 to the 13 power nanoseconds to complete this punishment. Basic algorithms and complex computation recitations, a predictable punishment for a minor deviation. They will take no time at all. At least that's what he wants to think, but his hand knows very well that Archivist B will send brute enforcers to scot his processor and test his concentration during the e recitation. Affirmative, Archivist is move. Expect my arrival within 3.6 to I'm sent to the 12th power nanoseconds. I'm not going to try and say an actual number for these. I kind of don't know. Affirmative. Specialist is at a 10. The connection closes, leaving his 10 alone with his own data and codes. He closes off his thought process for the moment and redirects most processes to calculations needed for his flight. The rest of the spare process are directed toward are directed to start planning for his arrival at pupil. So Ted knows very well now what waits for him and needs time to prepare. In about an hour, give or take a few hundred nanoseconds, the Ted reaches the inner wall of the sandstorm and passes into what the archivists call the Eye of, of Yasun, an inner circle clear of the storms that rage in the Ash Desert, what the low data savages call Grandfather Storm. The Eye of Yasun, much like the Eye of a Hurricane, leaves a great expanse of light and open to the skies, free of cloud and wind. Unlike a hurricane, though, the eye has an iris. Within the iris is the city of Pupil, home of the digital children, birthplace of Zatan's data core, and what he is, is, is no longer to be his home. <sighs> the iris is a great culmination of dark and storms trapped in a state of endless rage while held fast by ancient technology. An alien intelligence, deeper, older, and greater than anything the low or that savages can dream of, rolls in a state of constant activity. Clouds in the shape of a cortex pulsate with arcs and flashes of lightning. A deep sentience rallying against the bars placed around it. The storm is trapped, imprisoned by towers constructed of polarized metal that a ring in a ring, a ring in her iris. They form a barrier between the and of unknown ira. Ionized energies that prevent its bulk from moving or escaping from the eye, as well serve to expel its various energies outwards to avoid an energy overload within their grid, resulting in the endless overland hurricane that the low that are being referred to as Grandfather's Storm. These constructs are relics of an older world, artifacts of a more complex age, not only to the presence of pupil as the age of containment. Underneath the iris, shield it from prying eyes of the outside world by the captured storm and its cortex of clouds lies Pupil. Pupil is a city of towers that acts as lightning rods, constantly being struck at a rate of almost 600 times per cycle by lightning, absorbing energy from the intelligent storm to power vast facilities below the surface. Its size is colossal and even more massive below the surface and above. Much like an iceberg taking up most of what could be called a crater at the heart of the Eye of Yazon. It is built upon the ruins of an ancient age of containment and complex. Where the first digital show were produced by Edmund Sis, his pupils Enigmag and Mysterious Ruler, who had taken control of the facility after its low data guardians had been expunged from reality by several cataclysmic entities. <sighs> Archivist Boo stands within the confines of her small office in the Tower of Archives and recites the Advent's Code of Beginnings by organizing a specialized squad of brute enforcers to be created just for a specialist of town's punishment cycles. She looks over her demiriat at lightning rods of pupil. I showed her against the hundreds of flying strikes of energy f coming from above. It is the second tallest of pupil's towers next to the central spire inhabited solely by Advent's system. New size, knowing full well 
but eventually his freshman's attend with the aviate fully as did the others in his generation. The X4 generation were designed as such by Edmund Sis, built on purpose to be unfulfilled by pupil, and it's that digital paradise. Designed to roam the world outside of the uh, outside the Ivy Zone in search of perfection and completion. Mu furrows her brow and looks at the display in her hands. It shows that the level deviation last recorded in Sasha Zan, and glaring red bar telling her that the interest CV intensities are predicted with his evolved programming. Mu believes that she cannot let Zutan deviate fully. Her ethics and core processes will shiver what could transpire if that outcome is realized. Specialist Zutan has the evil capacity to evolve more powerful than even Admin Sis. Additionally, there is a deep corruption within his code, one that cannot be rooted out by practicing routine algorithms or complex gobble calculations. She archives her thought process, cutting it off from the task at hand. She sends an order to the, the fresh rebirth brute enforcers in the heart of the Katerian complex below. Target, Specialist Zatan. Order, Deletion. Priority, Rubicon Omega. Wait, what does it mean, Prologue? Oh well. This was uh, Digital Children. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. <sighs> Who knows what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but until then, goodbye.